Hi everyone, it's Lorna, Ladybird Stitcher. Um, it's Tuesday the 8th of December. Um, I've just brought my daughter home from playgroup and it's really hot and muggy here today, so excuse the hair and the appearance. Um, I've got a lot to cover, so I'll get started. Um, firstly, I'll go through my whips and I'll, I've got a fair amount of stash up positions, so if you don't want to watch that, I'll leave that till the end um, and you can skip it if you like. Okay, but firstly, my whips. Um, Firstly, Juliet by Chilton Crafts. Um, I'm really, really enjoying this piece. Um, I'm trying to get a little bit of stitching in um, every night. I haven't been, um, but I am trying. And I've just started doing that recently, actually. There was there was about a couple of weeks, or there were a couple of weeks um, earlier in, the, in November, where I didn't stitch on it at all and I really missed it. I came back to it and I found that I, I had really missed it. Um, but anyway, here's what she looked like last time you saw her. And this is what she looks like now. So it's it's almost a page finish. Um, I've got just that and then one more row of 10 by 10 grids to go and then it will be a page finish and then I think what I'll have to do is put this one away and start another one of well not start but continue on another one of my full coverage pieces because I find I am neglecting those because I'm focusing so much on this one um, so it's a shame but um, I'll talk about that a little bit later on but that's Juliet as she is now so um, yeah, I'm really enjoying that one. So if you're if you're considering a Tilton Crafts, I highly recommend them. Um, I am enjoying that one. I haven't stitched in any others, so I'm not not that well, well qualified to speak about them. But the one I am stitching, I'm really enjoying. Um, the next one is Lady of the Mist, and I'll insert a picture here of what she will look like when she's finished. And this is what she looked like the last time you saw her. And here's what she looks like now. So I I managed to I don't know if you can tell that I have made but I have made a little bit of progress. Um, I basically did a line and a half here of 10 by 10 grids. And I've decided that um, that's what I'll be doing from now on. It's one one of one line and a half every month, and I think then I'll be able to get her done by the end of next year. And that's my ultimate goal. Um, I've said before this piece has been hanging around since I think it's probably been about six or seven years now. Probably may, it might even be longer that I've had this piece going, and I do love it. I love the the roses on the side and her face, which you can't see, but um. She's absolutely beautiful, but I, I think I've just had my fill of her. <laughs> I know that sounds terrible, but I've just, I've, yeah, I just want to move on to another mirabilia, and I don't want to have too many mirabilias on the go. I don't want to have more than one on the go because then I know that I'll probably neglect this again and focus on the other one, and then this will go into another year and. I think I've just she's just been hanging around too long, so I really want to finish her. So I've just I've set myself that goal that I'm going to work on her a little bit each month, and just do a line and a half. Um, so yeah, hopefully that'll that'll finish it by the end of next year. So that's what she looks like now. And um, yeah, so you'll you'll be seeing that for the next few months, hopefully. Unless I change my mind, but hopefully I won't. Um, okay, next is the Storytime Sampler, um, and this will now this will be finished by the end of this month, by the end of December. So I've now done August because I know that Heidi, if you've if you've seen my earlier um, videos, you'll know that I was August is my daughter's birth month and her name is Heidi. And I was kind of hoping that the story Heidi would make it into this sampler, but it didn't. Um, but what I was planning to do was, if it did, um, was to mark, make that as my August um, frame. 
Anyway, I waited right till the end and it didn't happen, but that's okay because the, the one that they have made as the August one, which is that one, which is Phantom of the Opera, is my absolute favourite. I just love the colours, little chandelier there, the rose. Um, yeah, I just really like that one. So that's that one. And then for November, see that one? I'm not really a big fan of this one. Um, it's supposed to be uh, Little Women, but all it is is Joe March. And I had wondered how are they going to fit all of the sisters into that one little frame. Um, and they didn't. They just put one of the sisters there. So I'm not, I'm not really a big fan of that one. But anyway, that's Joe March from Little Women. Um, and December one has come out. It's the, a Christmas Carol. So this one will go back into the Q-Snap um, this evening. And I'll be working on that one until I finish it. And then this will be a finished piece for December. And although I'm not planning to frame it just yet, um, I will be giving this one to my daughter for Christmas. Um, so that's what it's looking like so far. With just one little frame left to go. So that'll be a finish. That's really good. Um, next is my on the go on the go piece. Um, so this is Bridal Shop, which is a Mill Hills. Sorry about the glare. It's a Mill Hills Buttons and Beads Main Street kit. Now I am really enjoying this one. Um, I find in the car that it's too bumpy for me to see smaller sized pieces. So large accounts I find hard to see when I'm in the car because it bounces so much and I can't find the right um, place to put the needle. But with this one, I think, I'm not sure it's, it's 14 count um, perforated paper. Um, this is the only Ada that I'm working on at the moment, except for my other traveling piece, which I'm, I'm not really working on. It's kind of in a drawer that I never really look at. But um, I find that because the, the holes are so large on this one, that it's really easy to work in, on in the car. Um, and if it wasn't for this one, I wouldn't do any stitching in the car. But sometimes also I find that I'm at home, I might have five, ten minutes to myself. Um, I don't want to pull out a huge project with a huge floss, floss box. Um, you know, and this one just fits in a little, little project case like this. So it fits in my handbag. Um, but if I've only got five, ten minutes at home, I'll pull it out and work on it then it's just really easy and um, I've mentioned before I'm going to Europe next year um, so I'm looking for something compact to take with me and if I if I haven't finished this one by then which I think I will have but if I haven't I'll probably take this one with me because it's just so compact and so easy to work on um, anyway this is what it looked like the last time you saw it saw it And this is what it looks like now. I'll just put something behind it so you can see it. Yeah. So um, I haven't done any beading yet. It's all stitching. But it's just, I'm just loving the way it's coming together. I think it's really beautiful. And um, you'll notice that I really have loved it in my stash acquisition because I've, I've purchased a couple of other Mill Hill bead kits. Um, in this vein, so you'll see that um, later on. But yeah, so if, you, if you're worried about the perforated paper, if, if you're thinking about stitching a Mill Hill kit bead, a Mill Hill bead kit, and you're a bit worried about the perforated paper, don't be. Um, I found it a little bit, it is a bit strange getting used to it. Um, I found that the needle kept slipping out at first. But when you stitch on it a little bit more, the, the, obviously the holes get smaller, so the needle tends to stay in there um, and it is a really great go-to piece because or um, mobile piece because you can put everything in a little carry bag um, and take it with you it doesn't take much room at all and it is really easy to work on if you're on the move so yeah. so if you're considering it give it a go I really recommend those as well next um, 
Next one is my hate piece called Stocking Faithful Friends, which I'll insert a picture of what it's supposed to look like here. And here's a picture of what it looked like the last time you saw it. And this is what it looks like now. So you'll remember that, um, well, in my previous video I mentioned that there's a new um, Heaven and Earth Designs official um, Facebook page and they were putting out a challenge or Michelle was putting out a challenge um, that if you worked on one piece and did 400 stitches you would get a free design. Um, and I'll insert a picture of the free design here. So um, that's really lovely. I really like that one. Um, I don't know when I'm going to stitch it, but I have it. Um, but yeah, I managed to complete the challenge, obviously, because, of, because I got the prize. Um, but what I'm planning to do with this one is once I've finished one page of Juliet, I want to go back to this one and finish this page um, and not pick up Juliet again until I finish the page on this one because I feel like I'm neglecting a lot of my other projects just to work on Juliet, which is fine because I love working on it. Um, it is a hobby, like we've said before. You know, you're supposed to enjoy working on your projects, but I do enjoy working on this one. It's not that I don't enjoy working on it. Um, and I really just would feel better if one page was complete. So I think what I'm going to do is just finish Juliet one page, go back to this one, finish this page. I've got a story keep that I'm also working on. So once the page on this stocking is finished, I'll then go to the story keep and finish that story keep. And my plan for 2016 is to finish the story keep completely um, by the end of the year. And that's only four pages long, so it should be doable. So that's that's my plan anyway, and I'll go into that a little bit more later on. But anyway, yes, I did more than 400 stitches on this one, so that's where it's at at the moment. And like I said, um, I'll probably, hopefully, finish a page January, February, sometime, a time frame like that. That's what I'm planning. Um, next, I have a small finish or a technical finish, this one. Um, this was um, a new start last time and it was Santa's Village. So I'll show you what it looked like last time. And this is it finished sort of. And the reason I say sort of, as you can see there, um, is because it should have um, a couple of French knots for Santa's eyes and buttons. And I think there was a little bit of backstitch somewhere as well, um, which I'm leaving right to the end because this, you'll remember, is part of Santa's village, which is 12 pieces. Um, so you can see that how large this piece of fabric is um, and that will hold 12 pieces or 11 other pieces a little bit like this one, similar to this one. Um, this was really, really enjoyable. I loved working on it. Um, it's a Country Cottage Needlewax um, project which I've really come to enjoy. Um, and I just love it. It looks, it's just so quaint and um, really Christmassy. So um, I really want to get back to that one, but I have put it away because A, um, I haven't kitted all of the other ones up just yet. I've kitted up most of them, but I'm just waiting on a couple of um, wheat style works. But also I'm focusing on the new cottage, Country Cottage Needleworks Christmas Stitch Along, which is um, uh, Gingerbread Village. and I'll show you that in a minute. But um, yeah, so this one, um, I've got all the charts that I need to complete the whole village. Um, but I'm just waiting on a couple of the um, over dyed threads um, to complete them. And they're just, I'm just not keeping up with them either. That's the other thing. So, But I'm glad I've finished this one. I am counting it as a finish, even though it's got a couple of French knots left to do. Um, I haven't yet decided whether I'll do French knots or exchange the French knots for beads. Um, I may do beads, but that's why I've left it till the end so I can decide all that later on. Um, 
So yeah, I'm counting that one as a finish. Um, it's Santa's house, which is part of Santa's village. So there. So it's that one. And then I've got a new start, which is the gingerbread train from Gingerbread Village, which is this one. And I'm working this one on um, Manor House by this is the the um, fabric is Manor House Lagana by Stitches and Spice. Um, I really love the, the fabric. If you, if you see it there, it's just um beautiful mottled brown and cream. It's really nice um, colour. Um, I just mentioned that I love Country Cottage Needleworks, but I am a little bit disappointed in this one, if I'm completely honest. Um, if you have a look at this one, you'll notice there's a lot of brown, um, and actually, it's actually showing up a lot better there than um, it does in real life, but. The last two stitches on the bottom of this train, the last two brown rows, are supposed to be a lot darker than these up here. And also these, the gingerbread men and women, there's one woman, <laughs> um, but the gingerbread men and women are a different brown to this border, Oops, this border here, even though they look almost identical to me. It, there's not much of a variation. And I know that one other person has said that on Floss Tube, that they don't like the difference in the two different browns. Um, one of them is Weak Style Works Pecan and the other one is Hazelnut. Um, and when they came, I really thought they were the same colour until I read the label. They, they are almost identical. Um, so I'm a little bit disappointed in that. And the other thing is this, this colour scheme. I just feel it's a little bit muted. Um, there will be red going into it. I just haven't received the red threads yet. Um, one drawback of living in Australia is that we don't. I have never. I am yet to find a shop that carries online or um, bricks and mortar store that carries the entire range of Weeks Dye Works or um, Classic Color Works or Gentle Art Sampler threads, um, or for that matter, DMC where. Um, Although you can order them, you, you have to wait for them to come in sometimes. So um, Stitches and Spices is a, an Australian um, fabric dyer, and they are great. This this fabric, as you can see, it's, well, I'm not sure if you can see it actually, but it is a beautiful, beautiful colour, um, and it's got a sparkle through it as well, which I'm not sure that you can see, but there you go. It, it is sparkly. So the, the fabric is beautiful, but um, although I ordered the entire thread pack for this this chart, um, she was not able to send me the reds that go with it. Um, sorry, offhand, I'm not, I can't remember the name, but I'll, I'll put that here. Um, it so the, I think the red will add a bit to it, and I'm hoping that it brings the red brings it out a little bit more. But it just looks really muted at the moment. Um, the other thing with this one is that um, all of the th there's actually eleven charts in this series, um, and all of them you can you have the option of either stitching or adding a button instead of one element. And I think with this one it was it was a, a present. This this here that is actually green ribbon on a present, um, and that will be filled in in red when the red thread comes in. Um, and that present, you had the option of stitching it or adding the button. And I've I've opted to stitch um, all of the, the elements on here rather than collect the buttons. Um, I'm not sure why. I just guess it might be easier to frame that way. Um, I just prefer stitching than adding buttons. I'm not really sure why, but that's just a choice I made. And it's same with Santa's Village. All of those ones also had um, the option of either stitching or adding a button. Um, I think the light just changed then. I'm not sure what's going on. but um, So, yeah, I'm sorry you really can't see that properly. But that's uh, that's it there. It's Gingerbread Village by Country Cottage Needleworks. Sorry, this one's Gingerbread Train by Country Cottage Needleworks, and it's part of the Gingerbread Village series. So that's my new start for the month, and I'm hoping to finish as much as I can of it, so all of it except the red, 
by around the 18th or 19th, which is when um, I'm expecting the second one, which I believe is um, Christmas tree and gingerbread. No, I'm not sure. Sorry. I think it's, it might be gingerbread girl and Christmas tree or something like that. Um, but the, that's the second chart in this series. Um, and hopefully by the time that comes, I'll have this this um, one finished as much as I can. I'm expecting the red thread to come in that package. I'm really hoping that that's the case. Um, and I'll work on that um, and hopefully have both of them finished by the next time we see it. So that's that one. Now I do have a large stash acquisition, so if you don't want to see any more, um, if you don't want to see the stash acquisition, um, have a lovely, lovely Christmas. If you don't celebrate Christmas, um, have a lovely December or um, whichever holiday you do celebrate. Um, enjoy it, enjoy spending time with your family and enjoy December and I'll see you in the new year. Okay, but this is my stash acquisition. So from Colour Cascade Fabrics. I ordered some pouches. Um, sorry about the thing. So these ones, I haven't, I haven't actually tried them yet. But what they are, they're um. So this is a closed end, and they've got an elastic top. And what that means is, if you had a lot of fabric, which you can see on this one, I do. You put it on there. You probably need a bit more fabric for this to work, but what these do is actually hold the fabric, the extra fabric for you. So I think they're really good. Um, and that's being sold by Colour Cascade Fabrics for 17 inches and 11 inches um, Q snap covers. So they just go on the Q snap cover like that. The additional thread goes in, goes in the back, or if you want to put it up the top or the sides. Um, they work that way as well, so I think they're really good. So I bought three of those. I bought, oops, bought this one, which is 17 inch pouch. I actually didn't choose the the fabric for this. This was chosen for me um, by Tammy. Yeah. Um, this is 11 inch pouch. And oh, this was just the one that's not covered for 11 inches. So. Um, on Stash Unload, I found this cute little pattern. Sorry about the glare again. It's a sunset counter cross stitch kit and it's called Peace in the Country. And it's done on Ada. It's, um, you can see there it's like a light blue Ada. It's, it's, they actually call it grey here. Yeah, it's, I guess it is grey. Um, the threads have to be organised, but that, that doesn't scare me. I don't mind that too much. Um, I just sit down one day and do it slowly. I don't mind that too much. Um, it's a 12, by, a 12 by 12 inch um, piece, and I just think it's really cute. So, it's a piece in the country. Uh, might be another travel piece, I'm not sure. Um, now, in my previous videos, I've mentioned that I have Cinderella on the stairs, mini Cinderella on the stairs by Hade, which looks like this. Um, and I'm slowly kitting that one up. I still have about five um, DMC colours to collect for that one, um, so it's getting there. I, you know, I'm I'm just about ready to start it. Um, also on Stash Unload, I found this piece of 18 count fabric. Adding count Ada, which is, you can see it's huge. This is for a mini piece, so it's it's more than enough fabric that I need. Um, and I've decided to do it needs a wash, but that's okay. Um, I've decided to um, work on do min, mini Cinderella on the stairs on 18 count. Um, just to, just as a bit of a change, I've done all my others, all my other full coverage pieces are on 25 count Magana or linen, um, and I just want to try doing two over one on 18 count. So this will be that one. Um, I, although I'm very, very, very tempted to start working on Cinderella on the stairs, I'm not going to just yet because um, 
as I've mentioned before, I've already got three full coverage pieces on the go and it'll just be way too much for me. Um, so I'd like to at least get one other one out of the way before I start on this one. Um, so once I finish the, the story keep that I'm working on, then hopefully I can start on this one, but we'll see. Um, I was enabled by Jessie Marie from Jessie Marie Does Stuff. I uh, found this book, Cross Stitch Sentiments and Sayings by Joan Elliott. Um, it's, it's a bit faded, as you can see. This was second, well, it wasn't second hand on eBay. It was, it was listed as, um, what was the word they used? Um, acceptable condition. Um, but it's fine. Um, you know that the although it's a little bit faded on the front and the um, corners are a little bit ragged, the the charts inside are fine and all the pictures are there and it's all fine. So, um, but that was a bargain. It does smell of smoke. So, although it came from a shop, I'm not sure. <laughs> I think they must let their customers smoke in their shop, but um, unfortunately, it does smell a bit. But it's it's fine. I, I'll use it. Um, I just really like some of the patterns in there. Um, I've only stitched one Joan, Joan Elliott design so far, and that was the card I showed you last month. Um, but I'm just going on a real Joan Elliott binge, I guess. I'm I'm just really liking her design. So there's a couple more here. And that's that one. It says too much of a good thing can be wonderful. And then here's some of the others that that are in this book. So there's some really cute designs there and um, I'm really liking. Um, and then following on from the Joan Elliott binge again, I found this magazine, Cross Stitch Crazy, and it is um, Looking for the issue number, it's November 2015, issue 208. So I'm surprised we've already got it in Australia, but um, here you go. Um, this magazine in particular, um, only a couple of things stood out for me, and that was this Santa by Shannon Wassily. I hope that's how you say her name. And that's her name here. Just excuse me for a minute because my baby's crying. Sorry about that, everyone. Um, along with the that magazine, there was this gingerbread house bonus sample chart. Um, there was a bonus card kit. And a Joan Elliott. This is why I bought the magazine because of this chart book. It's a small book, um, it's only little, so the magazine, let me show you, um, just so you can see how little it is, that's the size of it against the magazine, so it's quite small. Um, so that's that one. Um, I also bought, um, I mentioned earlier that I was really enjoying the Mill Hill Bridal Shop, so I bought another one, it's a Christmas Village Victorian house. And although it says twenty four seventy five up there, I, that's not what I paid for it. Um, I found a shop that's on eBay that's actually it looks like it's going out of business, but they're adding new things every day. They're an Australian supplier, and um, I found this one for fifteen dollars, um, including postage, so which I thought was a reasonable price for Australia. Um, and it includes that little snowman that you see there. He's actually a little butter here. Yeah. Um, since I bought this, they've actually added more um, buildings in the Christmas Village series, so I've purchased those and they're on their way. Um, so yeah, like I said, I'm really enjoying the Bridal Shop one, and um, although I don't want to collect the entire set, or I don't have to collect the entire set, but um, I do enjoy stitching the buildings, so, and they, like I said, they do make great travel pieces, so... And the other thing I bought was um, some needle minders. This is from Needle Minder Obsession in Australia. It's a teapot. 
And then for Christmas, I bought a little gingerbread house and a cocoa. Um, we obviously in Australia we have Christmas in summer, but um, I still love all the wintry traditions of Christmas. And then, last but not least, is Ultimate Cross Stitch Christmas. Um, I found this. I think it's been out um, in possibly England. It's, I think it's been out for a while, but um, I've only just found it in the stores here. I have gone through and highlighted my favourites, so if you want to stick around and look at those, um, I'll be showing those. If not, I'll see you next time. Um, so, this is by Leslie T. It's Little Robin. Um, I haven't stitched any Christmas cards this year. Um, I've, I've left it too late. But I will be doing those. I'll have this book for next year, so I can do that next year. Um, this little unicorn is by Doreen Jones. This is called Deck the Halls by Susan Bates. And um, this one looks like it's been finished as a cushion, but what I was thinking is I actually like the bauble, sorry, the bauble here. And I was thinking of doing that one on its own um, as a Christmas card for next year. Um, this one's called Snowy Animals, and they're by Deborah Page. Sorry, it's designed by Deborah Page. So, so those. It says that there's 40 of those here in, the, in here, but there's only they're only showing nine here, so there's a lot more there. Um, these are some gorgeous, gorgeous snow globes by Leslie T. Flock to the Fountain by Deborah Page again. That's really cute. That's not necessarily a Christmas themed one, but that's really cute. Um, Polar Pals by Doreen Jones. They're really cute too. Winter Wonders by Carol Thornton. They just remind me of English, England in winter, and I absolutely love England. After Australia and my birthplace of Malta, England would have to be my favourite place on earth. I absolutely love those. Um, this is a little stocking by Doreen Jones. Bells and Baubles by Susan Bates. Happy Helpers. This is by Lucy Heaton. I'll try, try not to show you the chart on the other side. So just yeah. but that's little elves helping out on Christmas Eve by lots of things. That's really cute. And Winter's Charm. This one's designed by Anchor. So that one um, obviously would be stitched in anchor threads, and they don't give you a DMC conversion, but I'm sure you can find it online. Um, there are heaps more in here, but I've just gone through and found my highlights. And this is by Karen Britton, and it's just a monochromatic Christmas sampler, which is really nice. So they're just the highlights of that one, and that, I bought that after I really enjoyed Ultimate. Cross Stitch Fantasy, which I showed last month. This is Ultimate Cross Stitch Christmas. So, um, like I said, I think they will, they've been it's been out for a while in England. I'm not sure about the US, but in Australia, it looks like it's only just come out because I have been looking for it and I've only just been able to find it. So, so. Um, yes, there's a lot of haul there. Um, it's actually my birthday, and it's a pretty significant birthday on Sunday. So I thought I'd treat myself. Um, 
because I don't expect for the rest of my family to, to buy stitchy stuff, just because it's so hard for them to know what to get. Um, so that's all, all fine, but yeah, I thought I'd treat myself. So that's why I've got such a large stash position this month. Um, I hope you enjoyed my video. Um, I don't know if I'll be back before Christmas, but in case I'm not, um, have a wonderful, wonderful time with family and friends and stay safe. And if you don't celebrate Christmas, have a wonderful holiday season. And um, if you do celebrate a different holiday, enjoy it. Um, stay safe and I'll see you either in the new year or later this month. Bye.